Hey folks, today I'm on the water with Brian the Carpenter. Hey. And uh, it's what, mid-December and mid it's gonna December. it's gonna get up to like 60, 60 something degrees. Yes. Warming trend. And blow about 60 mile an hour. It right is gonna day. have a hell of a front That's coming right. through. We're gonna try and catch some uh, tidal largemouth today. Yes, yeah, so a very sneaky spot that we're not gonna talk about. We're not talking about it. Ah, you know, we'll talk a little bit about it. People that know, know. Few people know. Um, it's a good spot for a small boat. I've gotten in there with big boats, but it can do some damage. It's tough, so. Cool. It'll be fun. Hopefully they're what's in your, there. What's your starting point on baits? Uh, it's pretty simple, man. Shaky worm, little shaky head, uh, with a little pit boss on a shaky head. Like that. Uh, dark Ned rig, maybe a drop shot. We're gonna be in there um, during slack low, so we may need to drop shot them with something dark. And then when the uh, current turns and comes back in, a jig, because the current's gonna come in with uh, like, like crazy, so. Cool, Yeah. let's get it wet. A, uh, a tributary to the Delaware River uh, down south here on the Delaware. Uh, it's a creek that has a lot of current and uh, again we're here in December the uh, the fish got to get out of the current so it's my favorite time to fish it because it's it bunches them up. Um, puts all the fish in the river in a handful of spots because you know to get out of current. Um, Again, this this one this one pulls hard. When we get to the spot, we got to run through. You guys can hear the highway. We're gonna go. We're gonna be running underneath of about six lanes of highway, it's 100 yards or so, um, against the current. Current coming in our faces. We're pushing through it. And Pretty we got cool. the power to do it. We got the power to do it. With electric, with the torpedo. Yes, indeed. You've done it. With this rig? I have, yeah. Okay. I've done it with my bass boat. And just to give you guys an idea, when that current's coming, I'm throttled down on the bass boat to push under. Like, giving it, current's trying to push the boat up on pad. I got a 250 pound buddy on the front deck, on his back, wall walking, pushing the boat nose down. But it's we're nasty. really low tide right now. I don't think we're gonna have to do any of we're that. We're not gonna be close to the top. Nope. But on the way back out, maybe? It depends how wait, late we wait to come out. Or how <laughs> early, because it'll be, it'll be incoming, yeah, how, how late we wait. Cool. So there's a window on getting in and out, and it's a, you gotta have enough water underneath you, but not too much that you bump your head. Cool. Just be. That was a lot of swift current, man. It's intense. Look at that eddy line there. Moving. All right. <laughs> Sweet. 
Let's catch some fish. 44, 44.3 right now. It's pretty cold. Um, they should still bite. That, you know, I know Jeff, we had talked about before, like more important than temperature is trend, right? And um, today's, we got this warm day. Maybe tomorrow will be a little bit better because today's 60s. And that's the hot day, but they still bite at the 44 and, and it can be really active. Again, depending on the trend. We got our first bite. Well, that piece of wood. That's right. Little guy. Okay. Show us what you got on. Yeah, never mind that spinner head. <laughs> There's a black crawl with a lot of blue liquid black. name on it. Subtle blue black. So a little hint of blue in there. I don't nice. think it's two. Right. Uh, but yeah, there's a bite. Let's go find more of this wood. It's bites. That's a good one, bud. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, this is the same jig I've been fishing the last two days on the Susquehanna River for smallmouth. You know, catching a largey there. Look at his scars. Look oh, how yeah. he's been chewed on. See that? Yeah, we got that one crossing that uh, highway over there. <laughs> yeah, he got ran over by a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Chunky fat fish. Yep. All right, let's get him back in. Delaware River. Large mouth bass. See you, guy. All right. So that's the jig. I just got it on. I made that with the do-it mold. Uh, this one's black, but I've been throwing a green one with the uh, the craw trailer, uh, the Z-Man bat wings up on the Susquehanna. But this is their uh, trick shots. You know, it's like a drop shot worm, but I like the ribs because you get the uh, liquid mayhem in there. Eighth ounce, uh, hand poured, jig head. So, Jeff just got a bite down here at this end of the uh, pocket. We're in a in a, a, a dredge a dredge pond off the Delaware, um, and we've got pretty good wind today, blowing down this end of the pocket. Um, just notice. In addition to, uh, um, in addition to the wind blowing down here, it, the water's about a degree and a half warmer than anything we've run into today, and that's from the wind blowing the warm water, the sun warmed water off the surface down in this direction in this pocket. So, another reason that they're, you know, in addition to blowing the bait down this way, uh, it's blowing the warmer water. We're making a run. The wind is really picking up and coming at us. And we were getting some bites down there. We got a couple fish. Uh, but we're heading to another area that's a little bit more wind protected. So it's a little bit easier to, uh, to manage your line and really feel what you're doing. Making, uh, you know, shorter casts and knowing when you get bites. When the wind is sweeping your line out, it's kind of hard to feel the bites. So. A little bit more protected water in a different spot. So, time to give the blade bait a shot. We're seeing them on the depth finder. What's the depth you think you're seeing them in? 10 to like 12 to 15, 18. 12 to 18 feet, big schools of bait fish and some other bigger fish mixed in. There it is. <laughs> I guess what we saw. <laughs> I guess we know what was on the what our marks were. Folks, literally the first cast I've made with the Jeff Little's own weight base. Tell you something. It's it's the carp specialist apparently. Thing gets bit. <laughs> Yay, there's your goldfish. 
There it is. Sorry, Carpy. So I gotta point this out, like, we must be such professional athletes, they had to turn the stadium lights on for us. That's right. Who's it's that it's my, my dark enough that forward. this, that triggered, uh, with this front coming in, triggered those, I guess, I guess they're, they're not on a timer, it's just the light sensor. Yeah. It's getting dark though. It's that dark. The world's about to end. <laughs> Coming aboard. Usually I use the net to like scoop it out, but that time you were swinging it hard enough, I used it to keep it from hitting me. <laughs> like it was, it was a defensive maneuver. Come off of that, come off of that log. And uh, same as before, that fish was up. Huh. So I pulled the bait up over it and uh, and hit it on the on the fall. Nice. Like I said, this is this is a crawl, but it's a lot more like a Ned rig. Yeah. You know, it's super lightweight, and it's all about the fall, not the bottom content. Nice. You know that that, that gliding fall. So. Slow rate of fall. All right. There it is. 44, 45 degrees. No, it got 40, yeah, 46 up on this this end where the wind's been blowing. We got Jeff. Back to back. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say back to back, but I, I can't even claim like you know any angling skill for <laughs> having caught this because I he he had his and I grabbed the camera and I just set the rod down. I came back to it. <laughs> I didn't get to put this in the water yet. Oh no! Right, awesome. Cheers. All right. Hold All right, let's let him go. Folks home, Jeff Little's hooked up. He's going for the net. It's going to be a big one. It's not bad, I saw it. So I had changed to the, the chunk trailer instead of that worm, and you know, Baba Luba. yo, maybe that he took it deep, dude. That's a good one. So, and he has it like, all the way in there. He took it. He's got the the goth. Lipstick on. Little lipstick. Yeah, the, the Susquehanna smallmouth like it too. But I switched to the the big trailer. Chunk. Instead of the, the big yeah chunk instead of the uh, the zipper drop shot worm and you know and take you a couple pictures and let this guy go. And you cast it to that stick. I said Jeff, cast to that stick. <laughs> I couldn't see it, and you're like, it's right there. I'm like, I don't see it, but whatever. Yay. It's up. cold. Yep. All right. So in water, this this cold, the area that they're going to move to to get after a bait isn't very big, and everything has been about wood. And when you're able to visually see, hey, there's a little stick. That's how we've been catching them. But sometimes you don't see anything, and you know I'm going to keep moving the bait with the rod tip and and reeling it in. And so I can feel the rod tip really, you know, say, oh, there's a stick. And that's when I stop moving. That's when I do the let it sit thing. But you gotta, you gotta basically break the bottom and, until you feel it. And then once you feel it, stop. Let it linger right there next to it. You know, just cause you don't see it doesn't mean that, you know, you're not gonna find it. You gotta find it tactically instead of visually. Had an awesome day catching them with you in what mid 40s water temp. Tied a large mouth. Yeah. One bad. Yeah. One bad. We got a we couple good ones. Yep. Yeah.
we uh, we started at one spot on the river, um, and uh, it's a cool place. It's really, really interesting how you get in there. You guys saw that in the beginning, and they weren't there. Um, it's weird. I don't know why, but the fish leave that spot somewhere in the mid to low 40s. They get up and get out. Um, most other places on the river, a spot set up like that, they stay there. They're there. Right. That one they move, and and um, so it was a it was a gamble because when they're in there, oh my God, it's fun. You know, it's fish in a barrel. But they were gone. Um, but but the place that we did catch them. Yeah. So we we got out of there, trailered the boat about 30 miles <laughs> up uh, up the Delaware to another spot and hit another tidal uh, pond. And they're both dredge ponds, tidal dredge ponds. So, and that's what makes them unique in, in terms of where they want to be in, in winter. There's, there's they need the tidal, tidal flow back and forth. They, need, they, they, they need, don't have as much of it in these. Right. They need the current. They need the, the, the break from the current. They need depth. They need hard bottom. And they have that here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hey, give me a, a rundown on your, your 2021 season in terms of tournaments that, that you did in this boat. You know, electric only waters or or otherwise. I know you take it to both both electric only lakes, but you do some tournaments in non-electric only waters. This is true. I, I, I have done that. I um, I fished uh, not this past year. The year before, I fished uh, the Ike Foundations event on the Upper Chesapeake Bay. Right. There's 150 boats uh, unlimited, and we fished out of this and uh, weighed in. 17 almost 18 pounds but everybody got them that day so it was a right. pack <laughs> um but not bad considering we were we were you know kind of stuck to where we were locally couldn't make the runs um right. this year i fished a lot fished a lot of tournaments just about every weekend uh fished a lot blind and uh you know without practice and and that that showed you know going into next year i'm going to try to get a day in on a lot of these places um, ahead of time. Sometimes you can just get get in there and, and, and wing it, but a lot of times kind of need a little bit of a sniff. So, um, fish the Slay Nation Trail, fish a lot of the local Thursday night beer league. You know, they're always fun. Uh, fished on Naka Mixon, which is a 20 horse max, 1800 acre lake. That's a blast. You did well on that one. We did. We did uh, me and Scott Kramer. Uh, we had a 19-pound bag that day, and um, almost 19, and beat out Ike and uh, and Keith Thomas, who had like 17 and a half. And they were the only two uh, limits that day. It was a tough day, but right. each of us found our own deal, and, and they were completely different bites. Those guys threw glide baits in grass, the last good remaining grass that was on the lake, and we were pitching a jig on a channel channel swing. Banks, deep bluff with banks with the channel come close and um, back with that. It's, it's tough to get a limit late in the season for sure. Can be. And um, we had one today. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you taking me, bud. Same here, buddy. All right. See ya.